YouTube and welcome to this episode of the Gunman Raw. So today we're continuing on from the previous video where we did the masking stage on this Mazda CX-5. Yes, another candy respray. Soul Rape Crystal 46V. So obviously all the masking has been finished off since then. I masked the doors up. I've given it all a good prep sole down with microfiber cloths and then a good tack rag. I also finished off all these bits of false edge masking. So I did most of the masking last night, but I, I like to do the, um, the false edge masking on the edges um, just prior to painting it because sometimes they can start lifting back on the edges. Anyway, so usually I use my Segola 4600 Extreme, um, the digital gun, but the digital gauge, the battery must have died. So I'm using this one, GPG, uh, just for wet on wet. What my American deals call sealer. Here we call it wet on wet or non sanding primer. So I've actually been putting a, a dash more reducer in my wet on wet these days. And with this, I don't want to go too heavy with it. You're not like smashing it on, you want like a, a relatively thin layer of it. Don't overdo it on those edges you see here, kind of staying away from there a little bit. I think this video here will just do the um, the wet on wet and the base coat stage and then I'll split the video up into a second part where we do the four coats of clear. So we've got to do three coats of tinted clear with the candy and then one coat of normal clear just to lock it in. Um, as it turns out, our detailer, the one that does so We've actually got two detailers. But the one that does the polishing on these, he actually, he finished up here a few weeks ago, so I had to do all the polishing on this myself. That's not gonna change anything in the way I paint it, but yeah, I mean, it takes me away from painting for a few days. But the bosses are very cool, like, the bosses here, are probably the best thing or one of the best things about this shop that it's so easy going and they're not stressed they don't pressure you I actually got this job to a friend of mine and um he wants, he was working here as a painter, then he left. He actually got off the tools, he's back in the office again. He's doing like quotes and, and stuff like that, quote writing and invoicing and all that kind of stuff, working in an office. Still in a panel shop, but, but yeah, like he worked here and he liked these bosses so much that he basically got me the job. Like, because he loved these bosses so much, if you know what I mean, like, he wanted to give, do them a favour by sort of getting a good painter, if you know what I mean. Without sort of blowing up my ego too much, if you know. So I'm going to go out and mix up the colour after putting this down. I haven't actually mixed the colour up yet, but that will um, that will work out well. It'll give me it'll give this wet on wet a, bit, a good amount of time to, to dry down, 
and it'll probably be about half an hour in between wet on wet and base coat because I think morning tea time is about to come up. So by the time I lift up the colour and have my morning tea, that'll probably be around half an hour. So I've found usually three and a half to four litres of colour gets me over these jobs here. The biggest pot we've got is two litre pot, so I usually just mix up two litres to start with, and then it's usually one and a half litres for the part. You may also notice that I've put some plastic up on the walls. I don't know how much it's going to do, but I did notice last time when I did do it, the job came out a little bit cleaner. Anyway, I'll see you when I've got some colour in the gun, guys. Radio guys, back to it. So it's actually been about half an hour, but it's still not smoker yet. I didn't realise what time it was, actually. Um, I was a bit ahead of myself before, so it's alright, it's good. Um, with a bit of luck, I might even be able to get this whole job done before lunchtime. And then I can um, get onto all the panels. And then, hey, the sooner I get the parts done, the sooner I can polish it. Woohoo! I'm kind of half joking, if you couldn't tell. I know I used to love my polishing. I, I mean, I don't hate it now, but I don't like it as much as I used to. I just went through a stage. Either way. Uh, first coat. I just showed 20 psi and one turn in on the fluid. GDI Pro Light TE20 1.3. Good old faithful. And I reduced the Enviro Base. So yeah, the colour I'm using is TPT Enviro Base, and I reduced it at 20 percent. Supposedly that's the recommended reduction in America, but here in Australia they recommend 15%. I don't like 15%. 20% to me is just it's better. So what I do this is how I spray the first coat. Second coat, I just wind the fluid in half a turn, but I leave it at 20 psi. And then last coat, I drop it down to 15 psi and wind the fluid in another half a turn. So pretty straightforward, but it has changed since um, since I started reducing it at 20%. So I used to go. I used to go 15%, which is, as I say, like that's what they recommend here in Australia, but I don't recommend that. That's what PPK Australia recommend, but I like the American way better. I mean, at the end of the day, like it's made in America. Those Americans have used this stuff for a long time. I would imagine, I would sort of like take, take their advice over Australia's advice. A smaller country with less experience, less people that didn't even make the product. I'd take the advice from the people who made it. But yeah, it's, it's funny, like, whenever you ask them a product, uh, whenever you ask them a question here in Australia, they say, read the data sheet, read the technical data sheet. Anyway, so... I read the data sheet and it said, it actually didn't say the exact reduction, but it told you a viscosity. It told you how fast it should go through a viscosity cup. Like 26 to, or 20, it was like 24 to 28 seconds or something like that. Either way, and then after checking the viscosity of 15%, it was like 40 seconds, so it was way out. And then when I told them, I said, oh, you know, like, I told them that, they said, oh, no, no, that's, you don't have to do it that way, that's the American. So, okay, so you tell me to read the viscosity, uh, you tell me to read the data sheet, when I read it, you tell me it's wrong. <laughs> they all 
also tell me that I have to use a side eject or else the colours won't come out right. I argue the point on that one. And then he continues on to tell me that the way you spray it changes the colour, which I agree. Like, you can get a, a relatively, a fairly different colour match out of the same gun just by spraying it differently, right? And that's true, like it is true. But then I said, okay, well if you can get such different results out of the same gun, why does it matter that much what gun I use? Like, <laughs> and he, he didn't really have a response to that. I think I got him, but he didn't really admit it. But that, that's the thing, like they believe, they truly believe it. So it's not like they're lying, they do believe that you need to use the starter jet or else the colours won't replicate. Well then how come any time I use a, a colour chip, they, all, they pretty much always replicate. I'll mix it straight up off that colour chip. I'll spray it out with this gun here and they'll always replicate. So, I don't think you do need to use the starter jet. In fact, I know you don't. But it's all good, man. I should probably ease up on the, the drama and the complaining and I just do my job, man. I actually, I don't really mind TTC that much. Yes, it's a bit slower. Hey, the base coat would just about be finished. If this was um, standoff, you'd be a minute away from completely finishing the base coat space. And what is the most, any boss will tell you this, ask them what the most, the biggest expense of their business is, it's labour. So if you can save labour, you're saving money. But with this system here, I have to put this coat down, wait for it to dry. Put another coat down, wait for it to dry. And then put another coat down, and then wait for it to dry. And then we're clearing. And as I say, if this was Sando Blue, mate, We'd be minutes away from the base coat stage being finished. And then we'd be on to the clear. Either way, it is what it is, mate. I just gotta work with it. I'll see you when this is dried down and we'll put the next coat on. Radio guys, back to it. So yeah, whenever I do like talk about paint breath, I just wanna make it very clear that it's never personal. It's just, it's literally about the content of the the stuff they're talking about you know what i mean it's not i'm not like oh i hate this guy because i don't i don't really hate anyone i don't have enough energy in my life to, to hold hatred towards people <laughs> over their opinions or their methods on painting a car like come on So you may notice I'm holding the gun back a little bit on the second coat. And you may have noticed that I did wind the, the fluid in another half of the time. But yeah, another thing that I was thinking like, and all paint reps are guilty of this, they are biased. I mean, they're kind of, they're literally paid to represent a certain company and they are going to try to sell or promote or you know they want you to think that that is the best product on the market but us painters like we don't have that bias you know what I mean we we just want to do we just want the best product I guess for the job um, and as I say like I think I said it in yesterday's video I mean PPG is like it's a competent paint. It's more than more than um, more than capable of doing the job. You know what I mean? But I guess after having a taste of the top shelf, it can be difficult coming down. You know what I mean? It's definitely not like a lower. It's like a middle of the range. It's not a lower tier paint system. I wouldn't say it's up quite up there with the Axelta ones, but it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it is what it is at the end of the day. It just feels a little bit dated. 
that's what where I'm at with it. Um, it was probably really good and groundbreaking and cutting technology, cutting edge when it was new, but I think it's a bit old now. Um, I actually heard that Glazer has came out with a new line. I can't remember the number, but I heard that they were kind of copying standoff and Axelta's um, system. Yeah, it's just like a sort of one and a half coat application. So I was actually in there mixing this colour up, thinking to myself, geez, I wonder if um, PPG have sort of have got another paint line in development or they're just gonna ride this one out, you know? I just I'm just curious I guess. It'll be interesting to see if they do try and develop something more like the um the Ash Delta system. But another thing was one of the guys that used to work here he swears by PPG colours. He reckons, man, I never had any issues with their colours. And um, he reckons that when you do start getting issues with your colours, the Spectro can need like more than a calibrate, like a, probably the, the equivalent to like a green tile reading. Um, with, with standoffs, every now and then you do like a green tile reading, um, calibrate and extra calibration. So it probably needs like a, a proper calibrate. But on the other hand, like, all you're really doing with PPG is just, you're using it to find a variant, if you know what I mean. So, if none of the variants are good, well then you're still going to be mixing up a colour that's not very good. So, like, PPG doesn't shade anything below 10. Either way, it's all good, man. It's all good, I'm happy. I've got to talk about something. <laughs> I just talk about paint. Anyway, now you're ready to put that last coat on. A little bit of muscle in that first coat, but it's starting to disappear after that second. And it should be all but gone in the last. It's looking like it's gonna be a clean job, this one. You just, after, after 22 years, well, 23 years now, you get a feeling for what a job's gonna look like. Um, but I don't wanna use the air blower in between coats because I have found when you do that, or it's more that when you don't do it, the jobs come up cleaner. So, yeah, because I guess you're probably blowing little bits of dust around and if you just let it dry by itself, uh, the jobs come up a bit cleaner. Rightio guys, so that coat definitely didn't take as long to dry as the first coat um, because we, we didn't put it on as wet. So, as I say, I didn't actually use any air blowers to dry it down. Let's continue on. Again, holding the gun back. Be sure to subscribe, but I'm sure you're already subscribed. And the next video will be coming up in the next few days. 
actually just got my internet hooked up yesterday. I just moved to a new house, so been very, very busy for the last two weeks. I literally haven't even had a, more than 10 minutes to relax. Running around. Yeah, that's another thing I actually don't particularly like about the PPG compared to the standoffs. Like, because you put the standoffs on like wet, it's all applied in in like one application, right? Um, the way we're spraying this last coat here, it's like it's quite dry, you know. So that leaves the base coat with a bit of a rough texture to it, and then you've got to sort of try to fight that with the clear coat. But, again, it's going to sound like I'm just bitching, bitching about the PPG, but it's, it's just an observation. Calm down, PPG, boys. And as I say, mate, anything I say about the rest, mate, I say the same, I say everything to their face. So it's not like I'm backstabbing or bitching about them. It's like, yeah. I don't, I don't personally dislike any of them. or care enough to dislike anyone as a say mate when you get to my age I'm like 39 years old now you um I don't know you stand back and have a look at it it's like man if I'm lucky I'm halfway through my life what do I want to spend my you know my finite amount of time on this beautiful planet and being alive what do I want to be focusing on you know, and at the end of the day, man, like, we're all just at work to make money. But no one really wants to be at work, like, let's be honest. So, you know, like, if I had my choice, I'd be at home with my family. And I'm sure you all would. That doesn't mean we can't enjoy what we're doing. But, at the end of the day, it's still... <laughs> most of us probably don't really want to be at work, you know what I mean? But it's all good. Anyway, that's about it for a bit, guys. Hope you have enjoyed. I'll give you a quick look over it once it's dried down before I clear it. Rightio, guys. So, as it turns out, we're not quite there yet. I've found a few nibs in the base coat. And also, I saw that the base coat was a little bit patchy. So, for what it's worth, I'm just going to go and give it another drop coat. Get another little one here. This is just 800 grit and there's another nib here. It's actually the second time I tried sanding this one out. The first time it turned into a bit of a lump. I got most of it out but with these particular spots I'll probably put an extra coat over them just to make sure they're covered and then we fill up those sanding scratches. So I might 800 and then give it a quick 1000 so I don't get left with any sort of deep sanding scratches to go straight up to the 1000 grit it would have just gone over the top of it without actually cutting it cutting it down properly so that's why I went 800 first there's some, something funky going on there that might have even slightly ripped into the base coat and I have to put a bit of uh, colour over that and just see how it looks I guess Sometimes when you try and do that, you just end up chasing your tail and you sand one or two out and then because you've sanded it, you create more. But hopefully that doesn't happen this time. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Just a bit of a But even as, as far as all of that muscle goes, mate, you wouldn't get that with sand or glue. Like, no. 
No way. I I'd I'd probably have the second coat of clear on now. If I was training Sando Blue, I'd be, the job would nearly be done. So, you know, you make your mind up. Even Glazeret, from what I hear, I've heard that their new system isn't that good. But who knows? It's, it's, it's hard to tell. That's just what I heard from another rep. A standoff rep over there in Perth. So. But I heard that they were having some uh, troubles with the colours replicating or something like that. So we'll dry these spots down. I'm going to dry that down for a second, I'll be back. Rightio guys, let's just continue on. So I dried that down for a minute. And we'll just do another drop coat. I think what happened, why this model is pump, I think I might have gone a little bit too heavy on that first coat. I think that's what it was. I don't usually have to do two drop coats. But I'm glad I did decide to because it needed it. So yeah, just leaving the settings the same as the last coat. We've got one job which, um, it's one of these, but it's like a rework. So it's been a respray. Um, they did it up in Canberra or something. And uh, supposedly like one of the panel shops did it. They didn't do it right. And then, the, and then PPT themselves came in and said they would fix it and then, well, it still didn't look very good from what I saw. They tried saving it with a cut and polish, but it wasn't acceptable. So yeah, that one got a little bit political from what I hear. So yeah, I guess the fact that I'm able to do these up to standards is, hey, I'm proud of it. I, I like, I'm doing better than some of the reps up there. I don't know if they check every single one, but I think they do. I think Mazda actually have each, each one of these reef rates inspected. I think actually the way it goes is like PPG themselves, they send the person out. Don't quote me on that, but yeah, like they, they have to be pretty good. Like they've pretty much got to be taken back to like factory paint or very close enough to a, um, a factory finish. So that's it for this base coat video. So I'll give you guys a quick look over it and I've got the color matching light here. I'm not sure how well it shows up on the video, but I've got rid of that mottle which I was a little bit concerned about. I'm glad I did. Sometimes you just gotta slow down, just 
just uh, take an extra couple of minutes. So this is, the doors is where it looked particularly bad um, and down the sides, but I did just do the roof just to make it all even. But yeah, that's looking quite good now. Um, and I'm also glad, like I, I sanded out those little imperfections. Um, same thing in that rear door, there was a couple of nibs there. So they would have they, they would have shown through um, even after you tried denibbing the car. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you would like to support the show, be sure to buy some of my merch. We've got all the kind of different things, all the cool stuff like spray suits, hats, stubby coolers and all that. Check the link in the description. Until next time, get out there and paint some shit coming out.